Um, in English hospitality, we always like to welcome guests with a cup of tea. I'm going to suggest that we make a pot of Earl Grey and English breakfast. What a good idea. Uh, and then you can choose which one you would like. So, right. assisted here today, so I will if you carry on talking while the tea is kindly being made for you. So the history of this company actually starts at the back of this building uh, and goes back to 1706. 300, 310 years ago in the city of London, and the city of London starts 100 metres that way, the city of London is a mile square, there were over 2,000 coffee houses. Coffee houses were places that the gentlemen would do business. But you ladies would never, ever, ever go into a coffee house. <laughs> Sufficient to say, if there was a woman in a coffee house, she wasn't a lady. So we gentlemen would meet in the morning and do business over, over coffee, but then we would go on to meet our friends and start drinking rum, brandy, arak, and we might be there till the early hours of the following morning. And you ladies didn't like the idea of your husband spending so much time drinking, maybe gambling, uh, in dark, smoky places away from uh, public view. So you start to use tea as a political social weapon to combat the coffee houses. <laughs> but before we continue that story, one, uh, a new word enters the English language at this time in history. If you were in a hurry for a cup of coffee, because most of the men were sitting there all day and it didn't matter whether it took five minutes or ten minutes to be served next. But if you were in a hurry for a quick cup of coffee, there would be a box like this, just in the entrance to the coffee house, and you would put a coin into it as you came in. The noise of a falling coin would attra uh, attract the server's attention, and you'd get express service. So what the initials on this box stand for is to ensure promptness. So let, let's pause the story there because I think the tea is ready. Yes. yes. Would, do you want to pile some mugs on the table and then? Um, we lots of these. I think we'll give them half a mug full. Will be nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, ladies at this end, would you like to see my colleagues and decide whether you'd like Earl Grey English breakfast or long gin. or long gin green? And so Philippa Thacker here loves Earl Grey, but this is Earl Grey with a twist. So she's added, um, chosen a very, very wonderful base for it from China. Yes, there's some bergamot, but it's also got a little bit of um, grapefruit, which gives it a distinctive taste. 